guys we're back just so you know i have all my videos on my tiktok to download get them while you still can the year without a summer across the globe in the year 1816 a sickly reddish brown haze hung in the air temperatures plummeted the sun didn't shine snow never melted flowers failed to bloom in washington dc it snowed in july Widespread crop failures led to debilitating famines. Some rivers remained frozen solid all year, disrupting migration patterns and causing mass starvation. Often the ash in the air turned the sun blood red. Some days the haze was so thick there was no sunrise, and people had to go about their days carrying lanterns through a seemingly endless midnight. Countless clerics and preachers declared the event a bad omen, a curse upon the land, a sign of the end times. Many assumed the land itself was cursed, and millions left in mass migrations that spread disease and rewrote regional boundaries. The cause of this year without a summer? A massive eruption of the largest volcano in Indonesia, Mount Tambora. Over 10,000 people died in the initial blast, but the deadly effects of the eruption were just beginning. Over the next few months, 24 cubic miles of ash spewed out of the volcano and into the atmosphere. This blanket of ash eventually blotted out the sun, causing temperatures to plummet. The death toll from starvation and disease caused by the effects of the eruption are incalculable. Meanwhile, Bill Gates is backing the first high altitude experiment of one radical climate change solution, creating a massive chemical cloud that could cool the earth. It's called solar geoengineering and it's highly controversial. How long will it be that countries keep experiencing these climate impacts before someone gets desperate and says, hey, we need to cool the planet with solar geoengineering. It would look something like this. Thousands of planes would fly very high and use nozzles to inject millions of tons of light reflecting particles into the stratosphere. It would create a thin chemical cloud of those particles around the whole planet, blocking some sunlight from reaching the surface. It would mimic a giant volcanic eruption, which we know cools the Earth. Back in 1991, Mount Pinatubo erupted in the Philippines. It was the largest eruption to affect a densely populated area, creating avalanches and giant mud flows that left more than 700 dead and 30,000 homeless. It also spewed a cloud of 20 million tons of sulfur dioxide particles into the stratosphere. That chemical cloud was hundreds of miles across and reflected about 2% of sunlight back to space. And in 1992, the Earth was cooler than in 1991. That is part of the mechanism, but you do this in a controlled way. Modeling studies have found that it could reduce the intensity of heat waves, for instance. It, apparently it could reduce the rate of sea level rise. It could reduce the intensity of tropical storms. But it also comes with significant risks and uncertainties. Things like mass famine, mass flooding, drought, of kinds that will affect very large populations. It could weaken monsoons in India, China, and Africa enough to affect crops it could eradicate blue sky. You start increasing the amount of diffuse light and you have less direct light, which is the same thing as saying it looks hazy and white. And if the global community decides it should stop? So you stop injecting it and after a year, the cloud is gone and you get this rapid warming at a rate much faster than you would get if we had done nothing. If you've taken out the greenhouse gases that are adding to the warming, then it will the temperature won't go up, it'll stay what it is. So if we don't stop emitting greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, we don't try as hard as we can to do that, then there's no point in doing solar geoengineering. That got twisted in the middle a little bit. Uh, could you imagine that? Like a whole year of dark winter? Is that where goth came from? Do you think that's where goth started? Like, it was very gothic, very goth to me to like wear your Victorian attire and take your lantern in the middle of the day because it's dark all day. I think that's where goth came from. That twist at the end with Bill Gates, that wasn't cool. I don't know why he has to pick at everything. I really don't like that guy. Responding to comment, Google which color is 6.66 terahertz. I don't trust Google. But let me show you my Cyma 1000 machine. This plays five resonant frequencies that are based on the different energy centers referred to as chakras that are linked to different parts of the body. Different parts of the body are linked all together using this energy meridian pathway, which is a very intelligent system. Although they don't make this machine anymore, there's actually two new machines called AMI, Acoustic Meridian Intelligence, which infers that your meridians are intelligent enough to process the acoustics that it hears or resonates to. 
from our hair. It's not our ears, it's our hair. Our hair is an antenna to the vibration, which oscillates in our body as sound waves, creating magnetism, which transfers into our brain as an electrical impulse. Magic. So back to this comment, code 666. Enter. Oh look, the color blue. And that's what it sounds like. Because everything has a frequency. This is what we're listening to right now. The best part about sound therapy is that it's non-invasive and there's zero side effects. You're made of water. Your water vibrates to the sounds and it has memory. According to Dr. Emoto, our water has a very specific structure and it retains this structure after a certain amount of time, about six to seven minutes. So if you listen to something for six to seven minutes, your body is resonating. It is vibrating to that frequency or lyrics or conversation. Everything that you hear is affecting your body. The hidden secrets of water. Dr. Emoto has even documented different words causing a different structure in our body. The words you speak causes structure or chaos. And I'm gonna be testing this myself with this new dark field microscope. While listening to frequencies, I'm gonna be able to see exactly what this is doing in our body. Kind of like this app that shows how sound is affecting water. I'll be doing that experiment myself. My microscope has a monitor, so you're gonna be able to see what I see. Something similar to this. Back to that comment. 666. Also strengthens your throat chakra. That's the energy center for your respiratory system. Your thyroid, your lungs, your ears, your sinuses, your adenoids, your tonsils, esophagus. I think that's it. I'm going to post the other colors next. I really like that lady. She always has really interesting videos. I like all her videos. She always has like the hair thing. I didn't know that about the hair thing. She's just so interesting. I'm gonna post more videos of her for her show. <laughs> Modern science, quantum physics, discovered the unified field. The unity of all the particles and all the forces of matter, of creation. Not only did they discover the unified field, but they found that everything that is a thing emerges from this field of no thing 
unmanifest it is unmanifest it is no hyphen thing but all things come from it anything that is a thing has emerged from this field of unity it's oneness the scientists know this exists but if they wanted to get there they you can't get there it's unmanifest you can't walk into this field but any one of those scientists could practice a technique transcendental meditation which remember true happiness is not out there you're given a mantra a mantra a very specific sound vibration thought very specific it needs to be life supporting at all deeper levels and that mantra that you're given gives the key that opens the door the mantra turns the mind within turns the awareness within and you naturally dive why is it natural because each deeper level of mind and each deeper level of intellect has more happiness and the deeper levels of mind and deeper levels of intellect correspond to deeper levels of matter at the borderline of intellect you transcend transcend is the key word it means to go beyond you're going beyond field of relativity duality experiencing oneness pure unbounded infinite consciousness this consciousness has qualities infinite creativity intelligence energy love power and bliss dynamic peace always been there never had a beginning it is and it will be forever unbounded infinite eternal immutable immortal consciousness fullness any human being can experience this easily and effortlessly with transcendental meditation transcendental meditation is just a vehicle to get you here when you experience this level you enliven it and it grows in the individual all positive light of unity all positive you experience this level and you enliven it and this ball of consciousness that you thought was just going to stay the same for the rest of your life starts expanding and these qualities expand i think it's lovely how science and spirituality is blending as time goes um as a kid science was none of this for me uh, i went to just a public school um I love science though, even, even in the basic school science, I always did enjoy science and it just gets better all the time. Um, what he was saying about the mantra, I kind of want to add into Bianca's, her video, how she had said about you listen to something for like six to seven minutes and since your body is water, it's going to resonate to that vibration. Um, I pay a lot more attention to the music I listen to in my house than I used to. I listen to a lot of music without words now, and if they do have words, I pay very close attention to what they're, to what might be getting stuck in my head. Because lyrics are just mantras that, that's my, that's my point of view. Lyrics are mantras, and a mantra in your head is going to manifest into reality. So if you have like a really bad lyric or a bad mantra in your head and 
it's stuck there for maybe half the day while you're at work or driving, that's just not going to be very good manifestation. So, here is the hole. But if you actually take a look down inside, there are stairs down there. Looks like these stairs used to go up further. That makes sense. What I find really weird is that all the lights, all these there are, these lights are on, so that tells me that they're still something active here. In kind of just looks like someone's grown up but got caught and buried. Too much, just I can't really anticipate if anyone's going to be around here. I, I, I don't hear anyone, but the lights are on, and I have no clue when stepping in. When I was here on Wednesday, this I think was about as far as I got. I haven't gone any further than this. I sort of chickened out and ran back up to. Uh, Go home, get some more space to record my phone. Since I was really low.
This is the biggest supermarket in the world. Located in the back rooms. I'm certain the last part is not real, but that guy is a special kind of brave to go down all them steps. Unless he edited it. Maybe it was fake. That's a special kind of brave to go down all those steps. And all I can think of is those like indented slabs that he was walking past down the steps. Like I would just imagine like what if they would just like open up and some jerks and tuxedos and animal masks grabbed you and pulled you into their terrible ritual or something i don't even know oh my god that was super creepy i would never go down the steps i would never do that i would never do that that has to be sped up I can't imagine that cloud covering up the sky that fast. That has to be a sped up film. Kate Middleton's lawyer confirms her passing eight hours ago. What? Then we have this video up here. I believe she's dead. Kate Middleton's lawyer confirms what no one knew until now. So now I'm kind of wondering, okay, where is she? So the last time Kate Middleton was seen in public, like, hey, here I am was Christmas of last year. That's almost three months ago. Then there was the announcement of her surgery, but she's not been seen really since. We've only been getting like photos like this that are grainy in a car with like sunglasses on. Now it's about to get really weird. Now watch these dates with me. March 10th, Kate Middleton's photo was killed by the Associated Press. The one that was released by Kensington Palace, like an official photo for the image being manipulated. The next day, March 11th, Kate Middleton confirmed that she did edit the photo and that she apologized for any confusion that it may have caused. The same day, March 11th, she makes an appearance with William in a car, but her head is turned away. And there's a lot of people speculating that was she just photoshopped in this picture. Y'all, I don't know what is going on, but this whole thing is just wild. What do you all think? Let me know below. That there's nothing believable about any of that situation. Like she had said that. I mean, are they like a high class family from Texas? They have a Spanish nanny. The dad is taking the family photos. And apparently Kate Middleton likes to play Photoshop with her family photos that her husband took. Like, are they a family from the Midwest or something? Like, that doesn't make any sense. That's just how an American, a rich or a well-off American family lives. Not British royalty. That doesn't make any sense to me. No British... That doesn't make any sense. Why would British royalty, like... It's royalty. Your nanny would definitely be a born and bred British woman, right? That doesn't make sense. Like, I don't think any of it's true. She's probably dead. For entertainment purposes only. I don't think she's around anymore. And I don't think the royal family is going to be doing much, much longer. Just my opinion. Because, um, they're just falling apart. The whole, the whole family's just falling apart. I think Harry's going to get in trouble here pretty soon with that situation that happened last week. I'm glad I'm not one of them. I got lots of problems. Lots more than me.
Nope. I'm not telling you what to do. I don't think it's wise to take dirt from a graveyard for a spell. I think even for anything, even if you just want to take some dirt to plant a plant, I don't think it's a good idea. I think something might follow you home. Nope. The Ghosts of France is a fictional story that seems to have a non-fictional energy to it when it comes to what we are shown spiritually about the two towers, the Statue of Liberty and the Eiffel Tower. In the 1880s, the Eiffel Tower's development was on the principle of entrapment for ghosts or souls. It was a primitive containment unit and it had a trap within the tower's structure. The control box for entrapping the ghosts were destroyed. So they had to bring in Ghostbusters. The Ghostbusters were hired and flown to Paris to investigate and learn that the Eiffel Tower was actually a primitive containment unit. They had to pull the ghosts into the tower by reversing the polarity of a proton pack and connecting it to the control box. Many of the ghosts possessed statues in order to extend their freedom from being in the trap of the Eiffel Tower. The ghosts were eventually imprisoned in the Ghostbusters containment unit. These proton packs needed 20,000 megahertz to operate like a lightning strike. So the tower was built as a primitive but efficient type of ghost containment unit. And it was known as the Ghostbusters of Paris. Until it was broken, it was a box for molecularly bonding the ghosts to the tower. When it was damaged, aggressive ghosts ghosts escaped. I don't know whether this is true or not, but this is what I see on the spirit realm in your readings that we bounce from one tower to the other and they have a proton control box to attract your soul and trap it. But of course, what I saw was that the person who committed suicide, they were not stuck inside the tower. They just awoke on the streets of Paris. Tell me what you think is actually happening here. The ghost. What was that? Is this real? I never heard about any of this. It's the Ghostbusters literally based after real people who have done things but like putting ghosts in boxes i don't think that's right this can't be real that can't be real that can't be real it's horrifying if it's real it better not be don't know but you better not why is it that even though the earth spins at a thousand miles an hour at the equator goes around the sun at sixty six thousand miles per hour which travels through the universe at half a million miles per hour, which is expanding at over a million miles per hour, are we able to take a picture of the sky on the same day every year and never see changes in the stars, even for thousands of years? Why does Elon Musk say, you, you can, can tell, tell it's, it's real, real because, because it looks, it looks so, so fake? fake? That's because it does look fake. Look how the Earth glitches out in the background, but the car doesn't. And see how the Earth supposedly looks from the International Space Station, which is 240 miles up. However, this was taken from only 170 miles. Do you see an issue here? It's just like the Red Bull Space Jump in the Mythbusters episode that used downward facing fisheye lenses to create massive amounts of curvature, but the non fisheye lenses from the capsule and the cockpit show flat horizons, which concur perfectly with weather balloon footage more than 20 miles up. Which, by the way, 20 miles high is roughly the size of the bulge that should be in the state of Kansas due to it being 413 miles wide. Here's what 20 miles up looks like. That would be a large bulge for something that is supposed to be flatter than a pancake. And by the way, Kansas is only the ninth flattest state in the U.S. How many pieces of flat land does it take to make a ball? Why when we look at the stars in December do we see the same stars that we see in June? We should be looking in two totally different directions. 
If ships sail over the curve of the Earth, why are we able to bring them back into view with high-powered lenses as if they merely sailed past the horizon of the eye's angular resolution? Why are we able to see things over long distances which, according to the formula for a ball with a circumference of 24,900 miles, should be thousands of feet below the curvature horizon? And now, with infrared technology, we are seeing things that should be miles below the horizon if we truly lived on a ball. If Eratosthenes proved the Earth was a ball thousands of years ago with an experiment using shadows, why do experts say that his results should actually be the same on a flat Earth with a smaller local sun? If the sun barely looks bigger than the other stars from Saturn, why is it able to completely light it up so that we can see it from Earth? And if something merely the size of the other stars can do that, why is the back side of Saturn not lit up by the billions of stars on the other side? And why are there dark sides to any objects in the solar system? If moonlight reflects the warm light of the sun, why is moonlight measurably cold? Why is it warmer in the shadows at night when it's the exact opposite of what we experience in the sunlight during the day? Sus. One of the things you've been talking about on your show is your allegation that government officials are aiding in pedophilia, <laughs> child trafficking, and the grooming of children, right? Well, you mean like what Jeffrey Epstein did with the Clintons? Ah! That's what I had for today, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed them. I'm trying to find some really different things. Um, I don't really have to try very hard. I come across all this stuff all the time. But I hope you enjoyed it. I hope to see you again. Like and subscribe. I don't have anything really silly to do today. I'm really tired. I'm kind of hungry. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it today. I had a good time. I think that's it. I think that's a wrap. Bye.